everybody. Hey, y'all. Hey, everybody. Hey, Instagram. Hello, Facebook and YouTube. All right, we're live. Let me see if I can't fix this a little bit. Oh, I'm going to have to fix this bottom one. Oh, oh, praise the Lord. Okay, y'all. We're live. Let's do all the things, right? Come in, heart the video, share the video. Helps me if you share the video. That is what helps me. All right. My book, The 90 Day No Talk Experiment. You can find this on Amazon. Amazon has it readily available. Tonight we are on day 54. Thank y'all so much for joining me. You guys have been amazing. It's so great to see everybody every single night. Y'all chime in. Let me know where you're chiming in from. It is my sincerest prayer that everybody, um, hey y'all, that everybody is gleaning something that you're able, again, if all you can get is one thing, then get that one. Marinate on that for a little while. And then, you know, if you need to, um, go back, replay it, all that. Let me see if I can't find my charger. Sorry, y'all. I don't want my computer to die. And I thought I had that plugged in. And I did not. There we go. Thank you, Lord. All right. Day 54, y'all. I, I thought about this last night. I didn't yawn one time. Not one time. Praise the Lord. Tonight, we're talking about road trips and roomies. Um, so, you know, you have to understand. You don't have to. I say that all the time. You have to understand. You don't have to understand somebody else's journey, right? That is just how it is. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yep. The 90 day no talk experiment. My last name is Wilson. And you can find that on Amazon. You don't have to ex uh, understand anybody else's journey. I think people share the journey. Hey, from Texas. I think people share the journey because it helps give you um, better insight into what other people might be going through, but you don't have to understand it. But um, I, I like for people to try to understand so that you can kind of see where my mind was at the time, what I was thinking and all those types of things. So um, I'm on page 101. If you're following along in the book, you do not have to have this book at all to be able to... Um, Join us every night. We are here until May the 30th, every single night until May 30th. All right. So um, this is called Road Trips and Roomies. Uh, recently, I found myself on a road trip with my sister and a friend. Now, when I say my sister, I'm talking about my church sister. We have been friends now 16 years, maybe 15 years. I, th I don't think we were friends the first year I was at the church. Our sons hung out together, but we weren't necessarily friends. I had little kids and, you know, she didn't. Maybe we were. I don't remember. Anyway. But we've been together so long now that I just call her my sister because she she is that. Um, it actually began with a phone call from my friend asking if I wanted to go with her to a woman's gathering. And we were going to drive to Florida. And so I was like, Sure. Hey, let's go do all the things. She told me the dates. I actually work 10 months out of the year. So out of 365 days, I work 100. I work 210 days. I'm off 155. That's just how my schedule works. I'm off June and July. And half of August, I go back mid August until the last of May. The students actually get out. So we have seven more weeks of school left. We go back to work tomorrow. And so I typically am freer than I was. And uh, she asked me if I wanted to go. She didn't want to drive by herself. It's like 10 hours to Florida to where she was going. And I said, absolutely. I would be, you know, be happy to go with you. I didn't, I didn't want her on the road by herself. She had made that drive before, but I still just didn't want that for her. I said, absolutely. No problem. Before this year, which was two years ago, before this year, I would never have entertained going because, uh, but look at God and how he set me up. See, I, I was almost an empty nester, right? I was, I'm not quite, I'm so close to empty nesting that I, 
I, I, I know what it's going to be like when it comes. I have um, three of my four children are grown. I have one son. He'll be 15 on the 30th of April and um, two more years of high school. Then he's going off to college for sure. He'll be my first, my first kid that goes straight to college. My first two went to the military and my youngest daughter went straight to work. And she will go to college at some point. She's just not ready for that commitment yet, which is perfectly fine. So very soon, I am going to be a total empty nester. But I was at the stage of life where I'm close to empty nesting. And I'm now free to travel where I want to, when I want to. I used to live in the it's never going to be my turn space. So that's what we're talking about tonight. All of us who feel like we're uh, living under situation circumstances that everybody else is doing everything and it's never going to be our turn. I never thought that I would have grown children. The way that my family plan was running, I would have a kid, wait like six, seven, eight years, have another one, wait another six, seven, eight years, have another one. And I always thought I would have children. I never got to the point in my thinking where my children would be older. And then I found myself divorced with children, a single parent. And it was like, I'm always going to have these kids. I never could see myself doing what other people were doing um, who had kids. And it was like, I was missing something. I was missing life. I was missing out on all the things because everybody else was able to do stuff. There were people getting married, right? I always thought, oh gosh, I'm missing out on that. There were people having kids and their kids were already grown and they were already empty nests and I'm missing out. I can't go anywhere. I can't do anything. I don't have the finances because, you know, our money is tight. It always was. I'm ne it's never going to be my turn, right? I know a lot of us have struggled with that. It's never going to be my turn, okay? I used to live in that it's never going to be my turn space. Like someone else was always going to do what I was never going to be able to do. It never dawned on me that after a little while, I would be able to experience things just like everyone else, but actually totally different. So I'm going to have the same experiences, but my experiences are going to be extremely different based on the way that I have served the Lord, based on the way that I've been obedient to what God told me to do. See, I had experienced freedom. Had I experienced freedom then, I wouldn't have no appreciation for it now. Because guilt would have robbed me of my joy of being free. I would have felt so bad. If I had traveled when my kids were smaller, I would have felt so horrible as a parent. Because all good parents stay home with their children. Parents don't just get up and leave and go out. I don't know that we ever, the time I was married, had a babysitter. Our kids, My kids were always with me. My grandparents never kept my, they didn't keep, keep my baby. That baby was me, with me all the time. Where I went, she went. When I met my ex-husband, uh, we were going on our very first date and we were going to leave the baby with his aunt. She screamed the whole time she went with us on the date. She never was away from me. And I thought all good parents have their children with them all the time. Very rarely, I don't think my kids have ever been to a sleepover. I know my young, well, they might have went to one at the at the Taekwondo thing. They've slept over there, but never went to a sleepover. Can I go to somebody's house? Absolutely not. Can I go to some? Nope, not going to do it. Because good parents keep their kids at home. Guilt would have robbed me of my joy of being free. Guilt from spending money I didn't have. Remember, we had debt. We had debt. How was I going to go out? How was I going to go on a road trip? Pay for my portion. I pay for gas. I pay for meals. I pay for a portion of the room. She invited me to go on this trip, which meant all these were her expenses. I was just riding along. But would that have been fair? She was. She didn't ask me for any money, but I was not going to allow her to cough up all the expenses. We we rented a, a, a vehicle so we wouldn't have to put miles on hours. So that was an expense. Gas was an expense. Meals. And then we were there for a couple of days. I was going to pay my share. But if I had gone back then, I had small kids and no money. So how would I have been able to even be? The only thing I could have been to her at that time was support. Does that make sense? I could have supported her, rode with her, that, but that was it. I wouldn't have been able to add anything to that trip. 
guilt of from leaving my children at home while I was out enjoying myself because everybody knows good moms never leave their children simply because they need enjoyment. I mean, who who's supposed to be living life when you have kids? You are never supposed to enjoy yourself. You're just supposed to stay with your kids the whole time. And then eventually at some point, like down the line when you old and decrepit and you know, one foot in the grave, then you can enjoy yourself. That was my thinking because I thought, man, dang, I'm never going to be able to do anything. What I didn't realize then, but I do realize now is James 5, 7 says, be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth. Be patient about it until it receives the early and the late rains. Seed and time only lasts a little while. The harvest will eventually come. So if I go back to um, Habakkuk 2, 3, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end of it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. I could never, ever imagine myself at this point or stage of my life. Never. I was always going to be somebody's mom. I was always going to have younger kids. And my youngest child will be 15 this month. And it's like, how can you not think this far ahead, Shakima? You already have two children that are totally out of the house, even for sister. I never thought sister would grow up. Sister's 20 years old. She was always going to be the little girl. She's 20 years old now. Psalms 24, uh, 27, 14, wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Second Peter 3, 8, but do not overlook this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as one day. And Romans 8, 25 says, but if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. I just had to give a little bit of time. I had to plant the seeds of being a good parent. I had to plant the seeds of taking care of my financial obligations. And after a little bit of time, to me, what seemed like forever, God was going to recompense me for all the things that I had done, for all the time I had given, for all the sacrifices I had made. And it wasn't like I was going to um, not have the same experiences, but I was going to experience the same things with no guilt. I was going to experience the same things debt free. I was going to be able to get in that car and be able to hand her over cash for the car rental. When they stopped for gas, I was able to put in my my turn for gas and then buy all my meals given to the offering because we went to a ladies thing. I was going to be able to do all of that. Be, but it was just after a little bit of time. After the planting of seed. After the planting, the seed needed time to grow and bring forth the fruit. The seed of raising children produced after a time period, children who are able to care for themselves. Not only are my children able to care for themselves, they're taxpayers, they law abiding citizens, they debt free, they make all their decisions, they live on their own, they don't ask me for anything. So here I am thinking that I'm planting all these seeds. I mean, I wasn't even thinking about it as seeds because there were moments in my life when I was angry about being the one that got that had to stay. Because remember, here's how this thing works, right? When one person decides to leave from a two parent household, that leaves somebody else. Unless the two parents decide to leave, then where does that leave the children? And I was not exactly happy about that all the time. I was like, I can't believe that this is my situation. Not knowing that if I planted good seeds, I trained my children, gave them the good foundation that they needed, that eventually they were going to go off and be self-sustaining, self-sufficient, and that was going to be the reward of my sacrifice of giving them everything that I had when they were small. And now when I want to do stuff on my own, while they give me a little bit of trouble about mom, you ain't outside. Yes, I am. They're proud of all the things that I'm doing now. They're very thankful for where I am now in my life. And they get to see the harvest in my life of everything that God has given to me, if that makes any sense. The seed of slim finances, barely making it after a bit of time and careful attention to my finances produced a harvest of debt freedom, resulting in financial fluidity for myself and my family. In short, no situation lasts forever. 
The honest truth is that I needed that time then so I could appreciate where I am now. When I post things now, it's crazy because I never could have imagined all of the things. So a friend of mine, her name is Tori. Um, Tori and I became friends from YouTube, but we actually live fairly close together. I've been to her house before. And, um, you know, a couple of times she's been my, my job, whatever. We, You know, you meet people all over the place. And uh, she sent me a video. Yes, she tagged me in a video yesterday of somebody that had done a, a duet with a video that I had posted that have gone viral. It had gone viral months ago. I don't even remember when I did the video, but it, it went viral months ago. I was on the shade room on their foodie, on the foodie section, not where they do all that talking and gossip and stuff, whatever they do. I don't know. But they have a specific page just for food stuff. And so I did a Krispy Kreme peach cobbler. And um, I have gotten so many comments about that video. It's been on X. It's been on Instagram. I don't think I've seen it on TikTok, but I'll go look for it. But I mean, it has been viewed millions of times. I think it had 1.7 million views in 17 minutes on the Shade Rooms page. And that was just from them posting it. They they did ask permission. Could they post it? I said, that absolutely. It was fine. So it's it's gone viral. I never could have imagined doing all of that then because I was so steeped in raising kids and, and homework and book reports and homeschooling because I homeschooled. I homeschooled my youngest two kids. They didn't even go. Jackson never went to a traditional school until he was in ninth grade. So all the time that I spent with my kids, I didn't go out. I didn't date. I didn't do anything. Work, home, and church. Work, home, and church for the last 15 years. That was all I did. So all the things that I experience now are just mind-blowing because I always thought I was going to raise kids. My friend Kelly, she uh, messaged me. I don't know what I shared, but it was something that I shared on Facebook. And she was like, Shakima, oh my God. She said, remember when you used to say, I'm never going to not have kids. I'm always going to have these kids. And not, honey, y'all, I cried big old crocodile tears because I knew I was going to be raising kids for the rest of my life. She said, Shakima, you thought that it was going to be 18 years. And she said, girl, it's been 18 years. You never know that the time is going to go by because you're so caught up in your situation and your circumstances, thinking that God has forgotten about you and what he promised you. And that is not the truth. The truth of the matter is, is God has not forgotten. He's just trying to get you to remember, or he's trying to work out all of the things in you that you're carrying around with you so that when the time, the appointed time comes, then you won't have all this baggage. Remember, unpack your bags. I got all this stuff I'm carrying around with me because I'm in this situation. And when I think about it, I'm totally free. Now, when I want to go, I'm gone. I'm going to see y'all when I get back. How can you do that now, Shakima? Well, now, like I said, all of my children are grown. Sister still lives at home. So if I wanted to go somewhere, I don't have to get anybody to watch Jackson. I don't have to send Jackson to somebody else's house and have him stay overnights where he don't stay no nights because my kids do not stay nights nowhere. But And she's getting her license, so she'll have her own vehicle to be able to drive. They are not dependent on me for anything. So now if I have a speaking engagement that I have to go to, or if it's something in the summer that I'm doing with the ladies, I can just go make sure everything is taken care of here. I've got the finances to be able to do it. I've got the time to be able to do it. And I can go. I have had men say to me before, I can do a long distance relationship. Well, that's partially because first of all, your finances ain't right. So you can't afford to go back and forth. We know, I get it. Your finances are not together. So you don't have any uh, residual income to be traveling here and there. The second thing is, well, that's, that's probably about, oh, your time. You don't have time. Most people don't have days off like I do. I work 210 days a year. I don't work every day. I was just on spring break for the last five, six days because we got Good Friday off. So just imagine if I were dating someone and they lived in Florida. We'll just say Florida. Let's not say Florida. They lived in Arizona. Okay, we'll say Arizona. I'm in North Carolina, they're in Arizona. Our time is limited because of the fact that we don't see, we don't live close to each other. But here it is, I've got six plus two weekends, that's another four days, so 10 days straight 
that I could have flown to Arizona to spend time. Now, we would have had to work out the logistics, preferably, um, you know, I have a friend in Arizona that I could stay with or however that worked out. Or I could find an Airbnb or something. You know what I'm saying? It would have worked out where I, I'm not staying with nobody, but I could have worked it out because my financials are correct. And the more and more I fly here and there, I get the bonus miles because I use my credit card for um, for traveling. So that's going to get me a couple of free trips here and there as I continue to work the system. So we work the system. See what I'm saying? But a lot of people don't ever even think past, past their situation or their circumstance. We always think we're going to have debt. We always think we're going to owe somebody. We always think that we're never going to have a good job or this job or whatever. My job is very flexible now. I don't have my own specific students. I work in the classrooms of other teachers and I work with their students, which frees up my time quite a lot. I don't have tests. I don't have grades. I have a lot of things that I have to do and I check them off my list with those specific students. But the bulk of their educational process is not my responsibility. I, I deal with their transition from high school, from middle school to high school. That's what I work with. So just that portion of going from one step to the next step. That's what I do. But all that other stuff I don't do. And so I never could see myself in this situation that I'm in now, even to the point of working on myself as far as my health, my weight. I'm down now 80, 83 point something pounds. I wanted to lose 100 pounds. So I about 17 more pounds to go to be down a, a 100 pounds. Because why? Because I do see myself married and I do see myself um, in a full, robust love situation with my husband. And I want to be prepared for it. Well, Shakima, you know, what are you doing in the waiting? Well, I'm working on my eating. I'm working on my exercise. I'm doing all the things I need to do so that when it does come, after a little bit of time of waiting, I'm ready right? Delay. I've heard this. I haven't read this in the Bible, but delay does not mean denial. It just means not right now. So what do you do in the time part? We always talk about seed and harvest, but what happens during that time part? Well, time is when I'm supposed to be looking at all the things that I need to work on, change or what have you. I could have raised my children so that they would be totally dependent on me, even as adults. And when I went somewhere, I wanted to go somewhere. I could never go because my adult children would be so dependent on me as a parent. Nope. What we going to do? We're going to get our job. We're going to pay our bills. We're going to figure out where we can live. We're going to get our car. We're going to work all that out so that when mom gets ready to go and do her thing, you are straight. You know how to go to the grocery store. You know how to pay all your bills. They don't have to ask me for anything if they don't want to. But then all I saw was this was stopping me from living the life I wanted to live. There was no possible way that I could have lived the life I wanted to live back then. My attention and my affection was exactly where it should have been on my children. And I gave them the best of what I had. If not, we would all be lacking something all these many years later. But thanks be unto God that we're not lacking any good thing. Nothing. The Bible says no good thing will he withhold from you. The best thing God could have ever gave me was my right mind. Shakima, you got to start thinking like this. You have to start thinking about this for the vision is yet for an appointed time. It's going to come to pass at some point. But while you're waiting for it to come, why don't you do the things that need doing so that when it gets here, you're not trying to play catch up. See, that's the thing. Thank you, Holy Spirit. When the stuff comes that you've been praying for, I'm not playing catch up trying to get to it. I've already prepared for it. So when it shows up, I'm ready to go. Picture me wanting to go on a date with a man and he picking me up from my house because we've been talking a long time. And now he he at the point where he can come to my house and pick me up and I'm going to make him wait an hour trying to get ready because I couldn't decide what I'm going to wear. The day I know we going out or the week before he say, hey, what you doing Friday night? I already planned Friday night's outfit before Friday night gets here. I already got my kids doing whatever they doing. Jackson probably is cooking something because he's trying to eat sister's mind in her own business. I'm in here getting myself together. And when the doorbell rings because he's ready to come and pick me up, we got reservations. I'm already out the door. So you got to think about it like that. What I'm praying for 
as the time in the middle, I made that preparation and done all the things. So when it gets here, I'm ready to go. I'm not, he's not waiting. They're not waiting. The next thing is not waiting for me. I'm already ready. And it took a long time because all we think about sometimes, not everybody, I'm not, no blanket statements here, but some of us think, man, it's never going to be my turn. Sure it is. It is going to be your turn. But are you going to be able to afford the road trip? Are you going to be able to eat out and eat what you want? I remember going on um, work trips years and years ago. Y'all, this is my true testimony. Can somebody hear me right quick? Listen to me. We would have a work trip in the in the summer. And it was a week long. It's not a week long anymore now. They stagger it. So depending on what your department is, you go for these days or a couple of days here. It's not a week long anymore. But I would plan out because I was association secretary at the time. Okay. I'm going to get there on Sunday night. So I'm eating before I come. They did not have complimentary breakfast in the hotel. So I'm not going to eat breakfast on Monday. On um, Monday evening, I'm just going to grab something quick at the mall because I can get McDonald's or something real quick at the mall. That's the best I can do. Tuesday, I'm not going to eat breakfast, but we are having the president's reception on Tuesday. It's going to be in my workstation. So I know that there's going to be food that I can eat on Tuesday. Then on Wednesday, because I'm a part of the executive board, there's going to be a meeting and all the executive board members are invited. So because I'm going with the president and the executive director and everybody else who's going, I know I'm going to be able to eat on Wednesday. And then on Thursday, I'll have to figure Thursday out. You know, maybe I'll get something or maybe before I left home, I packed a few groceries in my bag because in the room you do have a little refrigerator because I didn't have the finances to go and eat everywhere like all the other people I saw. And I would keep a smile on my face. People were like, hey, you want to go grab something? No, I'm good. I got I got some work to do. But thank you so much for inviting me. Not really uh, connecting to my truth that I didn't have the money to do it. But today, because I had enough time to get all the debt paid, to do all the things that needed done, to prepare, if I know I'm going on a trip, I just put another little bit of money in my um, vacation fund. I have a sinking fund for vacation. I'm not going anywhere until June. So, no, I'm going... The wedding is in May. I'm going on a girl's trip in June for the Titus Two Women. And then I have a, a pastor's conference in July. So every month I put money into the sinking fund so that I'm not trying to scramble when it's time to go. I already have money set aside. What's the money for? Well, the first set of monies is going to be for my room. I got to make sure I pay for the room. Then I have to pay for my rental car. I need to make sure that I have all the things I need. But while I'm waiting, right? I'm not going on the trip till May, June, and July, but all the months before that, I just put a little bit in every single time. So it's not like where you are now is where you're always going to be unless, here's the thing. Now, there's a, there's a, there's a kick to this. If you choose that, you can choose to stay where you are. You don't have to do something different. You, you don't have to do anything different. You can stay in the exact same situation that you're in right now. If you choose it, but if God has given you time to get it all together, then what, what I would do is I would sit down and devise a plan with the Holy Spirit and say, okay, I got these many years, these kids, I got at least 18 years with Jackson. What is it that you want me to do over these 18 years to get my life together, to raise him, but get my life together as well. And God, cause he's so good. He will be like, okay, do this, 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 and this. And before you know it, that time will be here. How do I know Jackson's going to college? It's already in his mind to go. How do I know he's going to be my first kid that I'm taking to campus? Because it's already in his mind to go. He's going to get scholarships. How do I know that? Because his sister got scholarships and she's going to make sure her brother gets scholarships. So she's going to be trying to scholarship him till he gets all the things. She's not where she at now working on her doctorate program for nothing. She's learning all those skills so she can help when, when he gets to that place. And then what, what does that mean? That means that mom is not going to be um, taking on or incurring the cost of his college education. You better get this book now while you can, while you're in high school, so that you're going to be candidate for all those scholarships. You got to be in this percentage, percentile of, of 
students in order to be able to qualify for the scholarship. So that's what we're doing right now. He's planning for college in 10th grade. Or mom is helping him plan for college in 10th grade. I need you to be prepping now. And some of us don't prep at all. We just sit and wallow in where we are. He just wants, we just, we just sit and we're like, Lord, I don't have this. I don't have that. She got this. She got that. People working out here. We doing what we doing. We, we working real hard. Okay. I gave my children the best years. And because I did that, God restored every year that I thought was stolen from me. Joel 2.25 says, and I will restore the years that the canker worm, the palmer worm have stolen. Let me go to that because I don't want to say it wrong. Joel 2.25. Let me get over. Oh, here we go. I'm in Joel. Look at God. He want me to be blessed. Joel, then I will repay you for the years that the mature locust, the adult locust, the grasshopper, and the young locust ate your crops. They are the large army I sent against you. Listen, God's going to restore. God's going to restore and God doesn't restore it back to its original. God restores it far beyond what, what it should have been way beyond all those years that I thought was stolen from me because my ex left me with them kids all those years that I resented. I'm going to be truthful with, with mine because listen, everybody ain't, don't tell the truth. All those years that I thought that, Dang, man, he didn't even he didn't even take these kids. He should have took them and I could have been living my best life. All those years that I thought were wasted. When I look at my kids now and see what they have done and what they're still doing and will do for the Lord, it was never a waste. It was never a waste. It was always worth it. But I couldn't see it when I was knee deep in my situation. Um, what a blessing to give me time to work on myself, my family, my finances, my gratitude, my desperation, my loneliness, and ever and every other emotion I felt during that time. So, whatever emotions that you're feeling, listen, it is not that you aren't feeling it. You are. Just be real with that. Write it down. God, I'm feeling this type of way, this type of way, this type of way, this type of way. All of that is 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 your truth. We understand that. It's your reality. But at some point. After a while, at the appointed time, things should shift for you because while I'm feeling like this, I'm going to determine why I'm feeling like this. And then I'm going to do something so I don't feel like this anymore. Now, now I'm in my harvest season. There's a principle. Seed time and harvest. You plant the seed, you wait a little bit of time, you get a harvest. I'm harvesting greatness appreciative children and reaping the benefits of the time I waited. Not only am I going to reap the benefit, but my husband will reap the benefit because he didn't find me. Then he finds me now. I don't have anything over my head that he has to take on. Nothing, nothing. Most women uh, who date someone, their sons end up fighting with that man. That's because the mom has, um, wrongly place that that boy in a position that's not his well you the man of the family now i've heard people tell my sons that and i'll say to them very very clearly my son is not the man of anything over here he is my son he will always be my son and i'll always love him but he will never be the man of this house because if i make him the man of this house when the man that i want to be the man of this house shows up they're going to fight for that position and i'll never put my son in that situation never my sons have never sat at the head of my table. It's just, a, it's just a seat. I don't care. If anybody sit at the head of the table, it's me. But I'm not putting that pressure on them. I'm raising them as best as I can to be good, solid humans, good, solid, God-fearing, God-loving humans. But after that, that's the best I'm doing. I'm not putting pressure on them undue. Not going to do it. Okay. My appreciative children were able to take care of themselves while I went on the road trip with my roomies. My waiting in my season of lack caused me to be a good steward of what the Lord passed through my hands. It was all about when I didn't have it, I was appreciative of what God did give me. Now that I have some things, I'm still appreciative of what God gives me. And I want to be a good steward over what God gives me. So that God will trust me and give me some more stuff. 
because I'm not going to ever be effective in the kingdom of God at my current level. I'm as effective as I can be, but my thought and heart is to want to be greater effective in the kingdom of God. But God's not going to trust me with larger if he can't trust me in the little. If he can't trust me with 18 years worth of time to raise my children and get myself together to work on my debt, my life, my attitude, my bitterness, my anger, my unmet expectations, all the things. If he can't trust me in those 18 years to do all of that and take care of the things, how is it that he can trust me with the man of God I've been praying for? God can't trust me in those 18 years to take care of my children, give them everything I got. How in the world can God trust me with my husband's children? Because more than likely, any man I'm going to meet at this stage of my life probably has children. His steps, bonus, whatever he want to call them. He can't. So I had to make it a point, a point in my life to focus on my kids and be able to accept others into my life. Okay. My waiting in my season of lack caused me to be a good steward over what the Lord passed through my hands. I had all the funds I needed to travel on a road trip with my roomies. There was absolutely zero guilt on this trip. And I've taken several trips since then. I feel no guilt when I go. Here's the thing. Um, I like what Miss Rose said. She said, there comes a time when you get sick of uh, being sick and tired, when you get tired of being sick and tired. And that is so true. That's when you get on the plan of God. When you sick and tired of it, God, I have felt this way for a long time. I don't want to feel this way no more. I don't want to not have the money to take my kids out to eat on a Sunday after church because everybody's going out on a Sunday after. I don't want to do any of the things that I've been doing all this long time, complaining, backbiting, bitterness, all this stuff. Lord, help me. And then what God does is he helps you. And I have some of the best children on this side of glory. Now, I know other people think their children are amazing. And I think you should. I think my children are amazing, as I should, because they mine. But if they look back over their life and say, Mom was always gone. Mom, they never do nothing with us. Mom, they never teach us nothing. If my, if one of my kids will even utter out of their mouth, do a reel, a video or something, say, my mom didn't teach me how to cook. Let one of them be on TikTok or YouTube or Instagram or wherever else with their house dirty and tore up. I'm, I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Because we're going we gonna to establish what, what I spent all my time doing, teaching you. Let them make poor financial decisions. I'm on my way. Because then they're going to have to explain to me how I wasted all my time inputting into them and they didn't do better than what they're doing now that does not mean that people don't have things that happen things happen illness all that situation bad stock investments i get it all that happens but you're not gonna let me spend all of my life investing into you and then there's no return on my investment see it's not just about my children what about god's children that you claim to be those of us i'm not you us we claim to be but we don't have any return on the investment that he gave to us there's never any changing of attitude and he says you can change your attitude there's never any godly character. He shows us how to have godly character. There's never any good stewardship over all the stuff that he gives us, but he shows us how we can have good stewardship. How in the world are we going to allow the Lord to do all of this for us, but we never have any return on the investment? Here's the truth. When the stocks don't do well in, in the stock market, you need to sell that stuff and get rid of it. You need to sell it. If that's not producing anything for you, you need to get rid of it. But God is so good. He doesn't get rid of us when we don't return uh, on his investment. What he keeps doing is pouring into us and then trying to get us to understand, okay, I've given you this. I've done this for you. I've made a way. Now, what are you going to do with it? I told the Lord, I said, if you get me out of the classroom, I will spend every waking moment I have start doing all the things I need to do for you. And he got me out of the classroom. Again, I'm still in a classroom, but it's not my own, right? I go, I'm a support staff. I go into somebody's classroom. Love my job. Love what I do. But I'm in there for a moment. There are teachers in there with them for the other moments that I'm gone. And when I come home, I'm not grading papers. I don't have tests to give. I'm not answering phone calls or sending emails to parents. So now just by the sheer fact that my position has changed, 
my that time I was using to do all those things. Now I'm able to focus and give God that time. I'm able to do the ladies ministry. I'm able to plan the workshops and the retreats and I'm able to do counseling and I'm able to do one on one meets and I'm able to do all of that because why I asked the Lord to do something for me and he did it. And when he held up his end of the bargain, it was for me then to hold up my end of the bargain. And that's all God is wanting from us. But I think that we do him a disservice, such a disservice, when he pours everything into us just by the sheer gift of his son and precious Holy Spirit. He's given us every good thing that he had. No good thing has he withheld from us. And some of us have not done anything with it. Nothing. You can't manage your finances. You need somebody else to manage. You don't know how to take care of your household. You got to have somebody to come over and wash your clothes and, and fix your meals. You don't know how to do anything on your own. I have a friend of mine and I'm done. Um, I have a friend of mine and she is not as tech savvy as she would like to be. So she has, you know, a few people coming over to help her with some stuff. And we were meeting and I said, listen, let me tell you how I learned how to do a lot of things. I said, I just watched a YouTube video. I learned how to edit videos from listening to an eight-year-old little boy on a YouTube video. This is how you edit your video. I just stop the video, back it up a little bit, listen to a little bit, a few more things, back it up a little bit. And I listened to that video over and over and over and over and over, and over again until I could then go into my uh, program, put in a, a clip, and then I could do all the little things. And I would edit it back, and I would add this, and I would go back to the video, and he said, do it right like this. And I would go back. And I said, if you just did that, I said, what would happen when those people came over to help you? Is you be, they were like, okay, I'm ready to help you with this. Oh, no, I already did that. No, I need help on this other thing. They would be so impressed. Imagine how people who are watching your life would be so impressed when you take everything that God has downloaded into you and you start doing stuff. You start doing the things that God has taught you to do. He told Noah to build a boat. It had never rained. You think he can tell a man to build a boat? It has never ra rained to the exact specifications. What about the building of the tabernacle? I, I go live at 9 p.m. Eastern. 9 p.m. Eastern is when I go live every night until May the 30th. That will be our last night. But that's how it is. Imagine. If God could tell Noah to build a boat to exact specifications and how to build a tabernacle when uh, they were building a tabernacle, he said, do it to these exact specifications. Could he not give you exact specifications on how to use all this time you seem to have in your life to get you together, to get your finances together, to get your household together, to get your job together? All the things he could. Don't waste the time. Don't waste the time. When I, I tell when I tell you that when the Lord answers the prayers I've been praying, and He's already answered a ton of them, I'm ready to move into this next season, but I'm gonna step into it prepared. I'm gonna step into this next season prepared. Why? Because I've already been working on it. He showed me what to do, he showed me how to live, he showed me how to move. I do no great service to him by doing it my way. Well, it's going to take too long. Well, wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Psalm 27, 14 says, wait for the Lord. But while you're waiting, do something. Do things. The rain is going to come. You got that right. And honey, how good was it when Noah got his family and them animals all up in that, uh, that boat? And when the rain came, all he had to do then was shut the door. Now, imagine Noah trying to build the boat when the first drops of rain start. God already had a plan in place. I'm about to flood this earth, but I'm going to give you a few minutes to get this boat built. And, and as we know, Noah was building that boat for a good little minute, but he had a word of the Lord. The rain is coming. So if I was you, I would um, do all the things. I tell... Uh, Married people, married people who have been raising kids their whole life. And here's the thing. I, someone said one time that their children needed them in their formative years. I get that. I understand that. 
But can I say this to you in with the most um, care that I can? Let me be gentle here because I don't want to hurt no feelings, but I really do. Listen, when you commit to a, a man or a woman, when you take a covenant vow, you covenant to that person. You don't covenant to your children. When my children were born, I did not stand before the Lord and say, and I, Shakima, take thee, Shemika, to have and to hold from this day forward in sickness and health and good and bad to rich and poor till death do us. I didn't say any of that to my child. Nothing. Do I, will I do all of those things for her? Yes, I will. But I didn't make that covenant agreement to her. So picture you and your husband in this house, giving your kids all your time. And you hear a lot of husbands are jealous over the children. That's because the, the, the wife spends no time with the husband. The baby can cry for a minute. It's okay. Greet your spouse when he walks through that door. Greet your wife when she gets home from work. If y'all on different schedules and she works and you work or whatever the case is. If you the house husband, have that meal ready. Whatever y'all got to do. But don't forsake your spouse for the sake of your children. Because the biggest issue that I see, especially with older couples who get divorced after 30 and 40 years, is because they have given all their time to their children and they have not nurtured their relationship while they were in it together. They did not handle the emptiness well. You have to be able to discover who you are pre-emptiness before the emptiness comes and you don't know what to do with yourself. You sit around here twiddling your thumbs. And now you all depressed and in your children business and at their house every single day because you can't be without them. Trust me, I'm not going to be in my kids house every day. Shamika lives in California. That's a long way from here. Can't go every day. But I had to find things that I like, what I want to do. Find areas, even if you're not going to focus on you, find people that you can help if you need to be helping somebody. Go to the nursing home. Find a friend who got some young kids that need some help. Find things that you like to do. If you're a husband and a wife, please spend time with your spouse because when the children leave home, you're going to be unsure of what to do with this person. No, me and my husband, we like to do X, Y, and Z. Mama, where are you and dad at? Don't worry about where we at. We out. We doing stuff. What y'all doing? None of your business. We not at your house. That's all you need to worry about. But a lot of people don't do that. They spend every waking moment with their children. I love my children. I love being around my children. I want us to have family land and everybody get to make their own house, but don't be coming over here every day. And I'm not coming to your house every day. That's how the young couples, see, I got to go back. The, the Lord is giving me a flow and I'm here for it. This is how young couples end up divorced because mom and daddy are always at your house. And your husband is like, do they ever go home? Well, they have not established life without their kids. And it doesn't mean that you totally throw your kids away when they get married or get grown or move out or whatever. But you do have to respect the new boundaries when they don't live under your roof in your household anymore. And but one of the biggest things that you can do is doing things that you like that don't include them. Because they don't want to be involved. And certainly the husband don't want to be involved every single day of, of his life. Is your mama coming over again? Okay, well, pray. You know, and I'm not saying that they don't like their in-laws. That's not what I'm saying. But I married you. I didn't marry you and your and your parents to be over here every day. That's all I'm saying. And I know that's very hard. But you want to be able to take road trips with your roomies. Especially if that roomie is your husband. Y'all better start doing stuff now. You better start working on this debt now. You better start getting stuff paid off now. You better start dreaming together now. Look, baby, we can't go nowhere. We ain't got no money for all that. But can we at least have a dream session? Where you want to go, babe? Let's just let's set the ambiance in here. Get you some hula mats and some, some fake grass and start making, set up your bedroom to look like Hawaii if that's where you're trying to go when y'all finally got enough money for it. But we're going to sit on this bed and act like we on the beach and we just going to dream together. You want a little fruity drink? Let me go get you a little umbrella or something. You got to start doing stuff now to make sure that when it is time, you ready to go. Honey, my bag been packed for Hawaii for 10 years. We've been saving that long. I ain't packed nothing but a little teeny keeny and we ready to go. We get clothes when we get there. Babe, you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Pack some drawers. Let's go. That's not what I'm talking about. But we don't dream anymore. We don't do anything except sit around and talk about what we don't have, where we can't go. What I did it too. Lord, how he going to leave me with these kids? I can't never go out. Child, go anytime I want to, when I want to. They're finna go again. I'm about to plan something else. They like, my you gonna be home? I don't think so. I'm finna be somewhere else. I've been home enough. 
Now, if you don't have those types of finances, it's perfectly fine. You might not go on a plane, train, or uh, airplane, or whatever to get to a place, but you got think there are things right around in your specific area within four or five hours of where you are. Pick a place, drive to it, enjoy yourself. My dream honeymoon is to go and hop around to um, B and B's, bed and breakfasts. I just want to go to this bed and breakfast see the town, do a few things and go to the next bed and breakfast for the next night. I just want to travel and see stuff I've never seen. I want to experience things I've never experienced. And this is the season for me to do it. I didn't have it then. I couldn't do it then. I would never have appreciated it then. But oh, will I appreciate it in these coming days? Yes, I will. And, and that's good. Miss Rose said her and her late husband took trips together whenever they chose to, when their children reached adulthood and they invited their children as well. I don't think there's anything wrong with family vacations. I think that is absolutely phenomenal. I love doing that with my children, but I am specifically talking about those of us who have neglected our spouses, period. We don't know nothing about these people. And now that the kids are gone and we don't have sports and we don't have uh, taekwondo and we don't have dance and we don't have all these little things, we if we don't have none of that, then where is our common ground? We don't even have common ground. I don't even know who I married. Then we'd be on there like Risa Tisa, who the heck did I marry? Looking at the person like, who is you? No, baby, we growing together. Even if we don't have the money to go right now, we dream into, I need you to speak dreams to me. We just sit here and hold each other like we on the beach. And it does something for your marriage moving forward. For those of you who are married and those of us who aren't, just pick these little nuggets up and, and, and uh, you know, file them away somewhere. You're going to need them one day if marriage is your desire. That's all I'm saying. So as I do every night before I leave you, the question that I have is, do you know him? You, you, you can, if you want to, you get to answer that question. You can know him without delay. It's not going to take three days and a cash bag and, you know, folk, folk for turn calls. You can learn, you can know God right now. Romans 10, 9 and 10 is all you got to go do. Call on his name and you shall be saved. That's it. That's it. Call on the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. If you already know God, then listen, I'm here for you. I'm excited. Praise the Lord. All of heaven rejoices for those who just came into the kingdom and those of us who've been here for a long time. Amen. Join me tomorrow night. 53 talks about kingdom connections. 53 is our kingdom connection. Please do me a favor. Like the video, share the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel. If you have it. Instagram people, there's a link in my bio to the uh, YouTube channel. We share a lot of things over there other than just these. Um, these are specific teachings that the Lord told me to do. But we share all kinds of things on all different platforms, uh, and all different vlogs and everything. So if you want to hang out with me and my kids, just come over to the YouTube channel. But anywho, thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. Sometimes I feel like I'm all over the place, but the Lord brings me right back. So all is well. Um, we love you guys and we will see y'all the next time. Bye now. Bye, y'all.